Hello everybody, my name is Dude, and welcome back to Night Class! Something, something's behind you, Night Class! Okay, that joke's old. Not sure why I find myself thinking of both of them in equal amounts, considering how different my feelings are between them. Vampire! Nice person! It'd help if the vampire was a nicer person, because then I'd probably feel more inclined to think about them. It's been a week now since the first class. I'm aware of how dorky this sounds to even think, but just deciding to stick with it has made me feel more confident. Like I'm on the right track to being a more deliberate, in-control person. I'm in a pretty good mood. I brought that one on myself. You didn't seem to enjoy our conversation last week. I figured I'd driven you away. I'm surprised to see you back. Don't flatter yourself. My brother's not coming tonight. He caught a bad cold sitting around outside at night smoking. Don't flatter me, either. He did that because he wanted to, not because I made him do it. I think people should... Oh. I think people should be able to make their own choices about their lives without someone else manipulating them for an agenda. Why are we in a marketing class, then? This is the wrong place to be! This is the wrong thing to learn! We are in a marketing class where that's literally all we do. That's all we learn how to do. Nothing about this scenario is correct. Ugh. Class discussion for the evening is pretty interesting. It's about press releases and advertorials and the difference between them. And about leveraging free media time and space by creating compelling narratives around products. All of this is new information for me, so I listen intently as other people talk it over. And then, of course, comes the inevitable interjection. What about astroturfing? Since mainstream media is irrelevant now, isn't it a better use of our time to talk about the different ways to position products in the social media feeds of potential customers? We're still calling it astroturfing? A little bit euphemistic there. Astroturfing? What is... How's that a euphemism? Is this the astro... And this is... Is this the turf and this is the astro and that's... <laughs> maybe that... Maybe that is the case and I'm totally just... Now realizing it. Usually I usually have no idea what you mean since the term isn't a euphemism. Okay, thank you, Aaron. I guess Rowan's thinking... <laughs> That doesn't quite work. The term is an euphemism. Astroturfing mimics grassroots involvement by creating sock puppet fans to infiltrate discussions and talk about the product. It's a descriptive name. Oh, God. Sock pu- Ugh. I hate this. I already hate astroturfing. We live in the age of Russian bot farms and international incidents based on fake news, Aaron. It's insidious, nasty propaganda. It's no different from the crap you were talking about last time, just in a different medium. You're contradicting yourself. First you claim it's a modern, contemporary phenomenon. Then you say it's no different from behavior from a century ago. Can't it be both? It's the modern day of the early thing. It's the modern day equivalent of the early thing. I did not realize we were getting political, but I actually stand by Rowan's uh, mindset here. We do live in an age of Russian bot farms and other things, and it sucks. Regardless of how you want to interpret the situation, it's still better than the alternatives. What possible options do you have left on your moral high ground? Putting up a page with giveaways of free soda and branded merch if they click the like button? Outright paying for advertising space on their feed? Sure, why not? Analytics target advertising pretty scientifically these days. You can reach exactly the audience most likely to respond to what you're offering. Shoving under their noses isn't going to make them love it, though. That's your fault for having a shitty product to promote, then. Maybe marketing was a bad call after all. Oh, I could have told you that! That guy brings out the nastiest side of me. Every time he opens his mouth, I just want to prove him wrong and make him back down until he surrenders. How would that look? He doesn't seem like the type to bow down to that easily, so he would probably be well-versed in it enough to improvise some kind of argument. Making it little not hard, but not impossible. Seems like he feels pretty much the same way about me, too. Yeah, why are we thinking about it? Maybe because he's a vampire? 
I don't want to stereotype, but it might be a subconscious power hierarchy thing. He saw me making friends with his brother, and now he has to put me in my place before I get too close. Ah, that can't be it. We, already, we were already arguing before I ever properly talked to Jake. I guess we would just hate at first sight without any special reason. I don't want to be the person he goads me into being. I refuse to be that kind of person. Hey, wait a sec! What? I just wanted to apologize for getting so heated in class. Of course you did. Do you know why? What? You decided that apologizing to me was a way to be more like the person you imagine yourself as being. You're a suffragette with a cigarette, a kid on a message board nodding along with a planted post. You, would cha you apologized because I steered you into wanting to apologize, and you had no idea the... No idea that the idea didn't occur to you naturally as part of your intrinsic self. You're a pretty path... You're a pretty pathetic magician if you can't restrain yourself from revealing how the trick's done before you even finish performing it. That makes you think that's the trick. Maybe that's the misdirection. He steps forward into my personal space, moving so fast that I intrinsically try to retreat, but there's nowhere for me to go. Then punch him! In the dick! Back of my head thuds against the wall behind me. The impact clenches, clicks my teeth together, and I feel a hard sting as I bite the inside of my cheek. <laughs> I slap him hard, my palm striking his cheekbone. His skin is cool and smooth, softer than I expected, and I can tell that it'll bruise. Yep, this is Twilight right here. Just saying. A little bit of Fifty Shades of Grey. A little bit of Twilight. It's happening. It's happening right now. We're gonna get fucked by the vampire. And this is illegal, by the way. Don't do this to people. Don't do this to women, especially. But don't do this to anybody. Don't back someone into a corner like that. That's not cool. Not only is it not cool, it's illegal, and I think it's also technically assault. At least it went on a human. I don't know for certain with vampires. That's more like it. Some real anger for a change instead of cranky moral posturing. You're not nearly as clever as you think you are, Aaron. You're know, not nearly as nice, Rowan. His mouth is so close to mine that I can feel the coolness of his breath against the cut of in my cheek. Are we just gonna kiss? I didn't know the vampires breathed. His breath smells like peppermint. A sudden wave of desire hits me so hard that it's like it's another shove and I almost gasp at the impact of it. His eyes burn into mine. I feel like he can see every part of me, every string he can pull to manipulate me just the way he wants. See you next week. He's gone before I can even get my breath back enough to push away from the wall. The taste of blood from my cheek is on my tongue the whole way home. What the fuck are we thinking? Is this... Is this how everyone feels when they're in this situation like that? Probably not. This is a romance visual novel. That's probably just the mindset of a visual novel protagonist. Oh my god. I, th this isn't cr this isn't right. This isn't right. Aaron's an asshole. He needs to be punched. The week drags on endlessly, but eventually it's marketing night again. I have to admit the problems this class is throwing my way are not the difficulties I expected to be having when I signed up for it. My imagined semester had a lot less wake up in the middle of the night feeling angry after a sex dream in it than the reality has turned out to have. What? Are, are, that was just casually said? Okay. Hey again. You owe me, dude. You sweet-talked me into the taking this class, and then you weren't even here the first week after I signed up. You feeling better now? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine now. I just have a weak constitution. That must suck. Glad to have you back. You should probably start having medicine about the, around you. Oh, good. I was worried that... The, as much as I'd love to hear what whatever witty insult you were spending the week polishing to perfection, actually wouldn't at all, so shut the fuck up. I don't need to say a word. You do my work for me so effortlessly. Let us see I didn't miss the part where you turn learn to value of friendship. I guess that's still coming up. Uh, no. Never. Aaron's already fucked up. He's... He's just gone. He's fucked. We're doing the history of marketing tonight, rather than more practical stuff. Well, shit. Hopefully it'll lift Aaron's mood from vile to tolerable, since he's 
into all that creepy manipulative shit. Jake's sitting beside me again with Aaron on his other side. I really need to buy a textbook of my own instead of just looking at Jake's. <laughs> Glance up for my notes at Jake's choked off gasp. He's already turning the page over in the textbook, so I only get the merest glimpse of what he was looking at. It's a photo of a bunch of the real madmen from the 1950s. It's an advertising it's in advertising's heyday. Like the TV show, but without devastatingly beautiful people playing all of the roles. One of the people in the photo stands out, his face more than striking enough to have stepped straight out of a Hollywood set. He's by far the youngest person in the photograph, too, even though he's clearly an executive. It's Aaron! Okay, well that explains a lot. I'm talking with vampires. This is a vampire story. That's how that works, yeah. Jake's out the door as fast as the class is over. Aaron's hot on his heels. A part of me wants to stay out of it. I'm not re it's not really my business, but I like Jake a lot, and all my feelings for Aaron are certainly strong, whatever else they may be. Um... I feel like I should follow them, but... Eh, maybe that would get me killed. I'll... I'll follow them. Why not? What the hell is going on? Shh, shh, you have to... Shh, please, just... Shh. Aaron! What? Jake, you have to forget it. Forget it, forget it, please, shh. What? Jake, you felt sick during class and we have to leave. Come on, we're going to go home now. Aaron, let's... It doesn't matter, don't worry, let's go home. Well, that's interesting. Aaron leads a plan... A Pliant dazed Jake off in the direction of their apartment. I'm following them before I even think about it. It's a good thing I walked this way with Jake on the night we met, because I lose sight of the two of them almost as soon as we leave the street near the campus. Aaron being faster than a human isn't any surprise, of course, but Jake? Something very weird is going on. I go up to their apartment door and knock. Are you fucking kidding me? Hey, Rowan. Sorry I couldn't stick around for the end of class. I guess I'm not as recovered from the last week as I thought. Should I just talk to Aaron in private for this? I mean, I saved before the branch, so if I die, then, like, we'll just not follow them. Okay, Aaron. What's going on? I mean, I don't mind the whole vampire thing, I just wanted some clarification. What makes you think you have any right to come here? Why can't you just leave us alone? Jake is obviously sick, and I don't know what your game is. You should be used to not understanding what's going on, though, surely? Leave your weird superstitious bullshit out of this. What the hell are you doing to him? Are you making him sick? I really don't know anything, do you? Idiot, he isn't sick, he's dead. Aaron's words are like ice down my back. And for a second, I think I'm the one who gives a shocked, strangled gasp in response. Then I realize that Jake's standing in the doorway. Before I can say a word to him, Aaron strikes. His teeth are in my neck before I have to time to react at all. My knees buckle. The pull of his mouth is hollowing me out. Deep-rooted survival instinct screams in my head, telling him to struggle. Telling me to struggle, resist, and get away. I manage to get my head up against his head. I'm going to push him away. I push him harder against my throat. I hope I die before he stops. I don't want to live if it isn't this. Feeling this. His mouth pulls away. I think I moan. I'm not sure. Everything is fuzzy. I had to. I had to, Jake. I had to make you forget. When you first became a vampire, you were so distressed that you tried to kill yourself. What? I can't go on without you. I die. I'll die without you. The only way to save you is to make you forget whatever you, s whatever you find out. I don't understand. Why is everyone sad? I could feel so good. Oh, God. Wait, what? What are we doing? Jake, come here. If he's going to make us forget anyway, why not give it and let go first? Fuck. See, I told you so. This is why I have to make you forget. You can't handle it. Aaron grabs me again. He's warmer now. My blood is making him warmer. He bites me again. It's messier this time. I can feel the blood running down over my neck and chest, staining my clothes. 
Oh, and I'm sorry. He bites the other side of my throat. If it hurts, I don't feel it. Jake's trying to prove Aaron wrong, trying to show that he can handle it. At least that's what I think is going on. Everything is slipping away. They don't feel so warm against me. I'm sinking into the warm. I'm cold. Well, we're a vampire now. I guess. At least we're not dead. Right? Waking up is horrible. I'm dehydrated and groggy. The bright light of the room is making my head hurt. I feel so sick that it's a couple minutes before I start to care that I don't know where I am. It comes back all at once, but fragmented and disjointed. Aaron, Jake, the blood. Careful, you'll make yourself dizzy. Here, orange juice. That's what they give donors at blood drives, right? Thanks, Jake. Really, really sorry about before. I wasn't thinking straight, you know? But it crossed my heart. Wow, an appropriate turn of phrase. Let me try that again. I promise I'm in full control now. I want to point out that promising that he is, is in control isn't the same as promising that I'm safe. Actually, no, scratch that. I never want to point that out. He looks more energetic than I've seen him before. But he doesn't look healthy. He doesn't even look human anymore in some way that I don't know how to pin down. I feel very, very afraid. I don't know what to do next. Going to class, being a part of all that everyday stuff, it all feels so irrelevant. What possessed Aaron to pursue that for us? What do you possibly have to gain from some farce of a human life? Oh, well, too late to ask him. I had to kill him. What? He'd never have let me remember otherwise. There was no way I was going to go back to that sick limbo, having my thoughts taken away from me so I could keep playing his game of happy families. Give you my word that you'll never have to worry about that. What? Oh God! Nothing we will, nothing we do will be happy. And I'll make sure you never forget any of it. Well, we're dead, aren't we? Yeah, we're dead. Well, I guess we'll um not follow them then. We'll probably not follow them then. Can I uh move on? It's not letting me click forward. It didn't let me click forward. It didn't let me click forward. Can I... Can I go forward? Please? Did the game fuck up? The game fucked up. Well, alright. We'll just call this an episode then. And we'll continue this from the beginning onward to the thing, I guess. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, if you did, subscribe for more. Now, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. And thank you to Sheryl and Leviel for supporting me on Patreon. And thank you to these people for supporting me on Twitch. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!